Hello friends, today in this session we will discuss transition curves. Transition curve is provided between the tangent track and the circular track and reason is that as soon as a vehicle enters a circular curve, it is subjected to centrifugal force as we discussed in earlier sessions. Now if you enter the circular curve suddenly, then this centrifugal force will also be introduced suddenly and that will create a jerk in the track as well as discomfort to passengers and therefore to provide a smooth entry from a tangent track to circular curve a curve is introduced between tangent and circular curve and this is called the transition curve. The idea of introducing transition curve is to have a smooth entry of the train from its tangent point to the circular point here and therefore the objective of providing transition curve is number one, number two, number three to introduce to introduce the centrifugal force at uniform rate that is number one. Because here the radius is infinite, at this point the radius is infinite, there is no centrifugal force. Here the radius is equal to the radius of the circular curve and therefore you get the full centrifugal force. And therefore idea of this is to reduce this radius constantly from infinity to r. And that is how you introduce the centrifugal force. Second, to introduce the super elevation in the track at a uniform rate. So here you don't need, the track doesn't require any Kent because speed, because R is infinite. But here you need full Kent and therefore at this point the track, the circular curve should have the full Kent. And between these two points it is uniform increase in the Kent. And when you achieve these two, the third objective is automatically achieved that is to provide comfort to the passengers. So these are three objectives of providing a transition curve in a railway track. And these three objectives can be met if the transition curve satisfies certain requirement. And these requirements are like this. It should be tangential to the straight track. That means it should start from straight with zero curvature. Number two, it should join the circular arc tangentially. That is at the end it should have the same curvature as that of the circular curve. Number three, curvature should increase at the same rate as the super elevation is introduced. And number four, the length of the transition should be adequate to accommodate the full super elevation. So these are four requirements to be satisfied to achieve these three objectives of a transition curve. There are several shapes of transition curves which can be used, but the most appropriate shape which is used in railways is a cubic parabola and the basic equation of a cubic parabola is y is equal to c into x cube. Now y is the ordinate, these are the ordinates and x the distance. At any distance x, y is the ordinate. That is the equation of a cubic parabola. c is a constant c is a constant and that would depend upon the length and the radius. So if you differentiate this equation with respect to x, this is dy upon dx is 3 cx square and second differentiation will give you the curvature that is 6 cx and that is equal to 1 upon r. That is the curvature. Now boundary conditions are that when x is 0, radius is infinite 
and when x is equal to length of the transition then it is equal to r radius of circular curve so when x is equal to l r is equal to r when x is 0 r is infinite and therefore c is 1 upon 6 r l and that is the equation y is equal to x cube upon 6 r l here r is the radius of circular curve l is the length of transition curve now question is now how do we determine length of transition curve now length of transition curve is estimated based on rate of change of Kent what is the comfortable rate of change of Kent in the track this is L is equal to there are three three considerations one is rate of change of Kent second rate of change of Kent efficiency and third the Kent gradient or Kent efficiency gradient so first criteria is based on rate of change of Kent and that is 35 millimeter per second so length of the curve will be speed in meter per second multiplied by Kent divided by 35 that is the length of the transition if you take this V in kilometer per hour CA remains in millimeter then this equation becomes 0 0.008 CA into V max maximum permissible speed this is L1 let us say same is the case with Kent deficiency also Kent deficiency will also increase at the rate of 35 millimeter per second so second criteria is based on Kent deficiency that is 0 0.008 into CD into V max whichever is higher CA or CD and third is Kent gradient Kent gradient should not exceed by 1 in 720 so L is 0.72 into Kent amount of Kent to be provided so these are 1 and 2 based on rate of change of gradient and rate of change of Kent and Kent deficiency third one is based on Kent gradient Higher, the maximum of these three is the final length of transition curve now there may be situations where you are not able to provide full length of transition because of certain side conditions so in that case what what is adopted in Indian railways is that take two-third of these values whatever value you get out of these three take two-third as the length of transition if there are restrictions on the side that means you increase this 35 to 55 that is the meaning of that so this equation becomes that this is basically CA into V max upon 125 CD into V max upon 125 so in that case L becomes CA into V max upon 198 instead of 125 it is 198 so if there are restrictions on the side to provide this transition as per these equations you can go as per that equation so it will be CA into V max or CA CD into V max upon 198 and this is reduced to 1 in 360 so this then becomes 0.36 into CA normally this should be applied in exceptional cases this can be used when you have restriction on the site now the standards further say that if there are restrictions on the site to provide full length of transition 
then attempt should be to provide the Kent in such a manner that the overall speed on transition and horizontal curve is uniform so that there is no discomfort to the passengers or you can say the speed should be optimized so that the overall speed is maximized or maximum speed is obtained on transition as well as on circular curve and what basically Indian railway suggests that this can be obtained when you keep Kent efficiency equal to the Kent actual Kent provided. So if Kent efficiency is equal to the actual Kent here, so the moment you, you obtain total Kent efficiency, you reach to the value of CA and because CA is same as CD, so you get the same speed at the curve also. So that is how the curve or transition is designed when there are restrictions on the site. Let me take one example just to illustrate how do we do this. An example is like this. On a broad gauge section, a curve of 600 meter radius has a limited transition of 40 meter length. Calculate the maximum permissible speed and super elevation if the sanction speed is 100 km per hour. Now here in this question, if you look at the track, it is a 600 meter radius of the curve, sanction speed 100 km per hour, that will require a very long transition. But actually transition provided is only 40 meter and therefore for a circular curve, safe speed is given by this equation. 0.27 square root of CA plus CD into R and for a 2 degree curve R is 1750 upon 2875 meter and the length of the curve, length of transition, length of transition is 190 C A into V max upon 198. Now, according to this equation, V max is V max is 198 into L upon C A. L is given 40 meter. So, if you substitute these two equations, 0.27 square root of C A plus C D into 875 equal to 198 into 40 upon C A. Now here you can calculate how much Kent is required so that the overall speed on transition and circular curve is maximum. maximum. And that is when you assume that C A is equal to C D. So if you take C A is equal to C D and solve this equation, then you get C A is equal to 90 millimeter. C A is 90 millimeter. So, if you are keeping Kent efficiency equal to actual Kent, actual Kent required 90 millimeter, but permissible Kent deficiency only 75 millimeter. So, rather restrict CD to 75 millimeter. So, CA actual can be provided on horizontal curve is 90 millimeter, can deficiency is 75 millimeter, and therefore the limiting speed will be now permissible speed will be 0.27 square root of. 90 plus 75 into 875 that is 85 km per hour that is the safe speed now sanctioned speed is 100 km per hour but that sanctioned speed cannot be maintained on horizontal curve because of limitation of transition 
because of limitation of transition and provide a cant of 90 millimeter assume the maximum cant efficiency will be utilized even then you can maintain only a speed of 85 km per hour which will be safe from the danger of overturning as well as skidding or derailment now this is now you have to also check whether the cant gradient is within a limit of 1 in 360 or 1 in 720 or not. So what is the cant gradient here? Cant gradient is cant gradient is cant upon length of transition 40 meter, cant is 90 millimeter, this is 40 meter convert into millimeter and you get 1 in 4, 4, 4. This is more than 360. Okay. In a, in a limited length of transition, what is suggested that you can go up to 1 in 360. Say the second case. Okay. And this is more than 444. Four, four. So it is okay. So gradient is now lesser. Lesser than 1 in 360. Fine. Okay. So that is the design. Now that is how you determine a speed on a horizontal curve when there is a limited transition. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. You can write a suggestion in the comment box.